Hey YouTube family, happy Thursday. It's Sarah, less of Sarah. I uh, actually said I was going to make this video yesterday, but um, life happens, so you're getting it today. This is, um, I guess, a response video or a tag video um, started by Michelle. Uh, her YouTube handle is Shell Smells one and she actually did two videos. She did a video talking about um, partially talking about the importance of people who are post-op sharing the realities of life after weight loss surgery um, with people who are either pre-op or who are considering weight loss surgery because of the importance of people knowing what to expect um, going into weight loss surgery and, and getting real information. And she encouraged people, you know, who've had all types of weight loss surgery to make a 10 things um, that people considering weight loss surgery should know video. And uh, she did actually mention me in the video, so thank you, Michelle. And I'm happy to do um, a response. I This is probably going to be a two-parter, unless you want like a really, really, really long one-parter. So I'm going to cut it into two, I'll tell you right now. Um, <clears throat> I did also see a response from Little Squirt 75 who uh, talked actually partially about Michelle's second video, which was her 10 things, and then also kind of added in some of her own. Um, and that was a great video as well. I don't think there are any right or wrong answers, to be honest. I think it's really important for all of us who are post-op to share what we know and share our experiences. Um, I'll be honest and say that I do think that there are a lot of people, I won't say the majority, but there are a lot of people who go into surgery, I won't say for the wrong reasons, but I'll say without being fully aware um, of what's really required or what post-op life is really like um, or what they should do before surgery. And I'm a proponent of personal responsibility. I'm going to put it that way and try and be gentle about it. I really don't think there is an excuse for not knowing what to expect. There are a million resources out there. And yet, and not so much on YouTube, but definitely on internet forums, I see it all the time. People complaining that they didn't know this or that. And I'm not talking about obscure things, I'm talking about really very specific things about weight loss surgery. That, you know, they didn't do their research, that their doctor didn't tell them so and so. And honestly, again, personal opinion, there's no excuse. You need to be responsible for your own health. And if you have I've gone to the point of considering weight loss surgery, then you are. You're taking the reins and saying, I'm responsible for my health. And that means you have to actually be responsible. You have to do your research. You have to know what you're getting into. Um, if you go into weight loss surgery not knowing, the only person who's responsible for that ultimately is you. So that's uh, not part of my top 10, but I'm going to call that the bonus one because I actually think it's the most important one. Be responsible for your health. And part of that is getting to learn as much as you can about what weight loss surgery is all about. So um, I'm going to do my top 10. It's kind of in order. I'm going to go backwards from 10 to 1. The very first one, number 10, um, is to learn what type of surgeries are available so you can decide which is most appropriate for you. So I definitely think that as a weight loss surgery patient, it is important to know what surgeries are available to you, what weight loss surgeries are out there. You may have a surgeon who is pushing a specific type of surgery on you. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's the right type of surgery. Okay, we, I think, tend to glorify, um, you know, doctors and surgeons and put them up on a pedestal. They're human just like we are. Um, they make mistakes. They have agendas. I, I don't want to come across negatively. I think doctors have one of the hardest jobs in the world. But I will say that, again, if you're going to be responsible for your own health, you need to learn what your uh, options are as far as surgeries, what the pros and cons are, what surgery might be best for you in your situation because you know yourself best. Um, and then you need to advocate for that surgery or, or, you know, decide whether you're willing to accept whatever you can get approved or whatever your surgeon does or what have you. But don't go into it blindly and just trust whatever you're told about the type of surgery that you should have. Um, that's the first thing that's very important when you're considering weight loss surgery. What goes along with that is to um, learn what your options are as far as insurance, self-pay. Um, if you're doing self-pay, are you going to have it in your home country? Are you going to go elsewhere? 
Um, so first you need to find out, does your insurance cover weight loss surgery? Some insurance will only cover certain types of surgery. Some will have qualifications. You may need a five year weight history. You may need to do six months of doctor supervised dieting. There's all sorts of different insurance plans out there. So learn what yours covers and doesn't cover. Don't get caught in a situation where you get excited because you think you're gonna be able to have surgery and then you realize you don't qualify. If you're doing a self-pay, research your options. Do you want to do self-pay if you're American in the U.S.? Do you want to do it in, you know, Mexico? Or there are other countries as well. And Mexico is probably the most common. Um, I had my surgery in Mexico. Um, I should say, even though we're like halfway through this video, if um, you just found this video searching and you haven't watched my channel, um, my highest weight was 460 pounds. I had VSG or vertical sleeve gastrectomy surgery six and a half months ago, and I've lost 170 plus pounds since my highest weight. Um, so in the last eight and a half months. So that was my story, and I did have my surgery in Mexico, um, and I do have videos on that on my channel as well if you're interested. Um, but I do think that you need to know all of the different options that are available to you as far as types of surgery and how you're going to pay for that surgery. Um, what's your copay if you're getting it through insurance? Um, you know, how much does it cost if you're having it locally and you're doing a self-pay? How much will it cost if you get it in Mexico? Um, what are the hospitals like? Research the surgeons. All of that stuff is really important um, before you even consider actually having surgery. Um, let's see, what else? Number eight. Um, yes, there are risks to weight loss surgery. There will be pain. There will be discomfort. There might be complications you may have lasting health effects from having weight loss surgery. Straight up, that's the truth. Okay, everyone is going to tell you, my sister's brother's cousin's, you know, Aunt Sheila died after she had weight loss surgery. Do people die from weight loss surgery? Yes. Do people die every day from other types of surgery? Yes. Do people slip in the shower and hit their head and die? Uh-huh. Do they get hit by lightning? Do they get in car accidents? All those things are true. Nothing in life is guaranteed. Okay, so... Yes, there are risks to weight loss surgery. I would argue that the rewards outweigh the risks, but that's something that you personally have to decide for yourself. But I won't sit here and tell you that they don't exist. They do, but they're extremely minimal. And also depending on the type of surgery that you're having, it certainly varies what the risks are. Um, learn about it, research it, find out what those statistics are for your type of surgery, for your surgeon, um, find out. Hey, there's, there's no guarantee that if your surgeon's never had a complication or never had whatever, that you won't be the first one. Okay, someone is always the first person. Someone is always the unlucky person. Um, but I, I don't believe that that's a reason to not consider weight loss surgery. Um, nor do I think that pain or discomfort or your hair falling out, or I shouldn't say falling out, thinning, um, or varicose veins or excess skin or any of that is necessarily a reason to not have weight loss surgery. If you're at the point of considering it, it means that you are likely obese, morbidly obese, super morbidly obese, and that's going to cause way more health issues for you, whether it's happening now or it's going to happen in the future, than anything else related to the surgery probably will. Um, number seven, yes, you need to take vitamins um, and supplements forever, and you need to stay on top of your blood work that stuff is non-negotiable, okay? If you watch YouTube or you listen to people who say, I had weight loss surgery and I never take my vitamins. That's good for them. Uh, if you want to do that, that's cool with you. You know, that's cool. I should say that's cool with me because that's your decision. But I'm going to tell you straight up, that is a bad idea. Um, someone was just talking about hearing people talk about VSG and saying because VSG is a, not a malabsorptive procedure, they don't have to take vitamins. You're crazy. I don't want to be rude, but you're crazy, okay? Take the time to be responsible for your health and learn. Just because VSG is not malabsorptive doesn't mean that you are getting enough vitamins because if you're doing it properly, you're not getting enough calories to be able to get in all the vitamins that you need. All you need to do is track your food on something like MyFitnessPal and you will see it will give you the major vitamin um, source numbers. There has never been a day that I've ever, ever met my vitamin totals in six and a half months. And I probably, there will never be with just food. It's just not possible because you're not eating enough to do so. So yes, you still have to take vitamins and supplements. Do you have to take as many if you're a vsg -er or, you know, lap bander as if you are a gastric bypass patient? Probably not. Does that mean you shouldn't take them at all? No. 
you have to accept the realities of what life is going to be like post-surgery. And vitamins is one of them. Getting blood work every three months or six months is also one of them. Um, I have heard personally a number of stories of people who stopped getting blood work done and then four, five, six years out had problems with all sorts of things because they weren't paying attention. Okay, so yes, this is forever. And you need to take vitamins. You need to get yourself checked out. You need to be responsible for your health forever, <laughs> not just for a year or two years or however long it takes you to lose weight. Um, number six, yes, if you want optimal results, you need to exercise forever. <laughs> Do you get the theme of this video? You need to exercise. Can you lose weight without exercising? Yes, you can, clearly. Because frankly, if you just look at it from a sheerly mathematical point of view, you are eating so few calories that you could sit on the couch and still lose weight. Does that mean that you should? No, because if you don't exercise, number one, you will not optimize your weight loss. There's a difference between losing weight and losing weight, um, you know, I won't say quickly, but effectively and getting to your goal, okay? Losing weight is actually not that hard. Losing weight effectively is a little bit more difficult. And if you want to lose weight effectively, you need to move your body, burn calories, um, build muscle mass because that helps you to burn more calories, both when you're exercising and when you're at rest, okay? All of those things are important, especially to maintain your weight loss. It's not just about losing weight, it's about maintaining and ultimately it's about health. Skinny people exercise too. That's like, that's like saying, well, you know, so-and-so is skinny, uh, so they never exercise, so I don't have to. Skinny people exercise too because exercise is not just about losing weight. Ultimately, exercise is about health. Moving your body is important. It doesn't mean that you have to go to the gym and lift weights. It doesn't mean you have to become a runner. It means you have to be active. You have to have things in your life that are um, activities that will help keep you fit, whether that's dancing, whether it's um, playing sports, all kinds of things. It doesn't have to be going to the gym. It could be swimming. It could be whatever but something that helps you move your body, um, not just to burn calories, but to stay fit um, for your overall health, your cardiovascular health, all that stuff, okay? So losing weight is only part of the health equation and exercise is another part as well. Um, so I'm gonna stop this video here and I'm gonna go on to uh, part two. See you in a minute.